So for round six, this time we headed north to Worldwide Technology Raceway, which is in St. Louis, Missouri. It's a one and a quarter mile uh, oval that we compete on. practice we start out of the gate strong was really feeling pretty good about the car starting to get it dialed putting more and more and more grip into it I actually have as as much grip in the car right now as it's ever had since I've had it together so pretty low tire pressures this is the first time I've ever taken all the compression out of the yellow speed coilover so it's pretty wild like the car is really gripped up I really can't understate how much but uh, the car was feeling good and I got through the daytime practice pretty good, finding my lines, tweaking some things, putting grip in the car. And then we went to the night practice on Thursday night and it all pretty much went to hell in a handbasket. I don't really know what happened exactly, but it looked like I forgot to, how to drive in outer zone four. So I spun out like three times, leading, chasing, got hit by Ryan Turk. Fortunately, I throttled up and got out of it at the absolute last second. He just barely hit me, but it looked like it was about to about to be big. I looked over and he was about to KO me in the door and I throttled up really quick and got the hell out of there. But, um, you know, no harm, no foul. Didn't, didn't hurt either one of our cars and it was over. But kind of went back to the drawing board at the end of the night on Thursday, trying to figure out what I was doing wrong. Called a couple people smarter than me and it was pretty much the group consensus that I needed to play with my brake bias. I did that and for the most part, throughout the course of Friday practice before qualifying, felt like I'd fixed the problem. We went out and, uh, and the car rotated and stopped and slowed down like I needed to at that point.
So basically for this track, it's probably the shortest run up in all of FD. I start in second gear, um, cause you really don't have time to shift a couple, you know, multiple times. So I start in second gear, you go through the chicane, come out, upshift to third. About the time you up, upshift to third, you can either give it a quick, you know, throttle over or a quick handbrake pull. I kind of do a combination of the two and then you're immediately into outer zone one. Not a whole lot of angle that you want to pour on there. If you pour on a lot of angle, you end up driving across the track too early. So just a little bit of angle, then you can pour on angle a little bit more as you get toward the end of outer zone one. Drive back across the racetrack, quick flick into outer zone two, which they shortened to half its distance that it was at the beginning of the weekend because everybody was getting into it late. So fill outer zone two, then it's like a complete 180 hairpin. I'm kind of playing with the throttle a little bit right there, just trying to get around it. And I did it both ways throughout the weekend. Sometimes I'd up upshift to fourth at that point. Sometimes I'd leave it in third. I ended up leaving it in third for the battles. So you go around the front clip, try not to hit it. I hit it a lot, but not so much later in the event. But get around the corner, don't hit the front clip, get out wide. Definitely not a whole lot of angle getting into outer zone three because you will definitely not make it into outer zone four if you do. Just a little bit of angle, fill outer zone three. And then it's probably the weirdest sensation in drifting that I have um, because it's a sweeping right hand corner. So you're like, I'm like literally looking up and try and look around the corner to get a peek at outer zone four before you get to it because it's a wall all the way around. You can't see anything of what you're coming up to. And I finally get a peek at outer zone four, start to transition. Don't transition too fast and spin out because you're, when you start to weight transfer, Usually you're grabbing a little bit of handbrake to get the car to rotate and pull on around and then you're trying to grab some foot brake and when I was grabbing foot brake that's when the car was spinning out because I was not actually didn't have enough rear brake and it sounds kind of productive but I had to get enough in there where where it would kind of rotate at the same speed as the front. So you do that, get the car slowed down. The last outer zone, outer zone four is pretty small also. Try and get back on throttle, finish nice and smoky. Yeah, so qualifying, um, I'd say overall it went well, especially considering some of the issues that we had been fighting with the car and really, you know, with me in practice. Got it tuned up, got it fixed, and qualified with a score of 88. Um, wish it was a little bit higher. You know, some of the some of the ones I was looking, of the people that qualified around me, um, I wish it was a little bit higher, but it wasn't, and it made me qualify 16th. My good buddy, Rad Dan Burkett, qualified 17th. We had never run against each other before, um, so that was kind of interesting that uh, we've been such good friends for so long. We both came into Pro 2 at the same time in 2015 and have come all the way up through and run in Pro for four years now and have never seen on-track battle against each other. So we had joked about it because we knew we had qualified close. I was like, man, I hope I don't have to battle you tomorrow. And you know, it turns out that's what ended up happening.
So this is the first time I've ever been like the first battle up. Um, this was a unique situation where Alec Robbins qualified first. They did not make him run his by run, which I thought they were going to. So Dan and I were literally the first battle up. So we went up to opening ceremonies. The car didn't get hot, I would say, but it was up, you know, 150, 160 degrees. And I wanted to make sure that the car wasn't going to be hot at all when we first started our battle. So I left the water pump on and the fans on during our opening ceremonies. You know, we're out there getting introduced. Hey, this is Taylor, driver of the Comp Cams, Cadillac ATSV. So I'm waving to the crowd. Meanwhile, my battery's going dead. So we, they tell us we're done. I get back in the car, click, click click car won't start i know immediately i left the battery on too long too much going on trying to get it cooled and um, they hooked a truck up to it jump started me and and i got it started eventually but then i pull up to the line they weren't quite ready for us so i shut it off uh, usually my car will start right back up after it's after even if it's dead um, once i get it fired up the the, bat, the alternator will recharge the battery pretty fast and um, so i wasn't really all that worried about it but this time it didn't do that and um, it took a minute to get it restarted there was a, a real situation there where i thought i was gonna have to call my five minutes so i was kind of freaking out in the car a little bit but we ended up getting it going uh, but it was definitely a tense moment So top 32, battling my buddy Dan Burkett. Um, you know, it's not what either one of us wanted. We're both really good friends, and you know, we both hate to see the other one not move on into you know the top 16. But that was definitely going to be the case here. Two men enter, one man leaves. It's going to be what it is. So we go out. I got to lead first because I qualified one position higher than him. Got through turns or outer zone one, outer zone two, enter and outer three, all really clean. Some of the best you know, zones of those that I had done pretty much all weekend. I came to that dreaded outer zone four that had you know, pestered me all weekend. Rotated the car and it rotated just a little bit more than what I wanted it to. Um, and, and I wasn't able to fully fill outer zone four. So I was kicking myself. Immediately after the first run, you, know, you get 80% of the course right, but the last 20% kind of leaves a lasting impression and felt like that's what I did. I knew I was, kind of at a deficit. Tomorrow was coming on the radio saying, you know, he was he was pretty close, he was on you. You're gonna need to go and, and really give it a good chase to, you know, to push this in, into our favor or, or, you know, even into it one more time. So, I knew I had my work cut out for me even after my first run because of mistakes that I made. So we go into the next one. I knew I had to push hard. I entered pretty close behind him. I felt like in, in pretty relative proximity. I ended up pushing a little bit long in outer zone two, which put me a little bit behind him when he got the throttle coming around interclip one and into outer zone three. So that wasn't ideal. He was he had a better line and a better arc chasing me than I did with him. And I don't know if it's something that I did in my chase that kind of promoted, or in my lead that kind of promoted a little bit better follow, or if I just kind of put myself on the wrong trajectory in chase. I really haven't gone back to fully study that footage of what happened, exactly why that, that was, but regardless, the end result was he pulled a little bit of a gap on me coming between 
interclip one and outer zone three much more than what I wanted it to. I was still pretty close, but not as close as he was, not as close as I wanted to be. So when he established that little bit of a gap, it puts a lot more smoke in your face too. So I, I got to the point where I really couldn't see all that good when he came back across the racetrack to transition in outer zone four. So I transitioned when I thought that I was supposed to coming into outer four. And then when I popped out of his smoke, I transitioned way too early. Um, then you have to take like this goofy wonky line and I'm like lunging in because I'm like trying to pass him now because I've transitioned too early and you know just don't have my car in the right position. Um, and you know I kind of got back in the pocket sort of at the very end of the finish line and we came across the line together and I thought in the car um, in the car you generally have a pretty good idea of whether you won or lost. I thought right then immediately I'm pretty sure I lost this battle. I have issues both both laps, lead and chase in outer zone four, and that's right there in front of the judges, and that's not where you want to do it. Um, so I thought I lost. Um, I did lose the battle, unfortunately. So um, my buddy Dan won, and I was happy for him, but obviously very sad for us. We don't come there to do anything other than stand on the top of the podium. So it has not been the event, and really not the season that I that I wanted or expected and have come to expect out of our team and specifically out of myself. So pretty disappointing weekend all in all. Again, I can be happy for my buddy, but at the end of the day, we, we wanted to put him on the trailer. So I did get one vote for one more time and looking back through the video, I can see where you can come up with that um, with either choice, right? You know, I can see how you can, you know, have it, you know, teeter toward Dan and I can see how you could have it go one more time, but in my mind, you shouldn't leave it in the judges' hands like that. I should have done a better job of showing dominance in the lead and in the chase to where you don't have to hope for a one more time. That's not what I go out there to do is trying to get one more time. So we need to win, and I did not get it done behind the wheels, the bottom line, and that's why we didn't win. So, you know, now we pick up the pieces and prep the car. Well, I guess I don't have too much time to prep the car because it's in my buddy's trailer headed to Long Beach already. So we'll get some time to prep it out there before Long Beach starts. But that's our next event and, you know, just a few short weeks away. And I really like Long Beach. I've only ever been there once because of the way that COVID and things got canceled. And one time my car wasn't ready and I didn't make it out there. So I made it there one time two years ago. It's an awesome racetrack. It's a great event being there with the Long Beach Grand Prix. I'm really excited about it. Also a little bit scared about it. There's walls everywhere on every side. If you make any mistake, you're going to the wall. That's period. That's how it happens. And I really don't want to tear the Cadillac up, but we're going to go out there and give it hell. And if that happens, that's what happens. I really hope you're enjoying these videos. If you haven't already, please take a moment to like, comment, subscribe. We got some exciting news coming. We'll see you on the next one.